Somewhere underneath this convoy of tractors and sleds is a lake. It sits under 800 meters of Antarctic ice, and it's probably one of the most isolated bodies of water on Earth. A team of scientists traveled there hoping to drill into it, and I was lucky enough to go along with them. It took them two weeks to tow their gear out to the drill site, and during that time they passed over five meter crevasses with names like Personal Space and Mongo. They had been meticulously mapped and bulldozed full of snow. Spending time in the flat landscape of the ice leaves your senses exquisitely tuned to even tiny changes in the vertical. I remember one time riding a snowmobile, zooming down what felt like an endless hill for half an hour, but when I checked my altimeter, we had only dropped four meters. Drilling through 800 meters of ice is no simple matter. Really, nothing is in Antarctica. I sat for hours with the ice drillers as they bored into the glacier. This is Dennis Dooling, the lead driller, looking kind of actually worried that a camera has revealed a hole that has branched into two, and this would hold up the drilling for more than a day. Because the scientists were searching for life in the lake, we had to wear sterile suits to avoid contaminating the samples. Those suits had a way of transforming even the most virile person into a caricature, with a hunched back and a voluminous butt crack running all the way up to the shoulder blades. No one knew when they would break into the lake, and determined not to miss that moment, I stayed up for around the clock for four days, sleeping only a couple hours at a time in my tent. One morning, the crackle of a handheld radio woke me from a two-hour nap. I grabbed an algae bottle, already heavy and frosted over with a quarter liter or so of frozen urine, peed some more into it, and rushed over to watch as the lake was finally pierced. I watched as a video camera, that's the black thing on the left, was lowered down a hole into the lake to confirm that we had reached it. Seventeen of us watched for a couple of hours as it inched down the icy hole. It was kind of like a corrugated intestine. People were nervous since we had already had two false alarms, and everyone cheered when the camera finally plunged into brown muck at the bottom. As mud was raised from the lake, dark glops of it spattered onto the snow. This stuff hadn't seen the light of day in maybe as long as a million years. And uh, I picked some up and it was kind of scratchy like wet cement. It was surprising because it looked really smooth when you looked at it. It was like holding something from another planet. And I think everybody wanted to touch it for that reason. People even drew lines on their face with it. I watched a paleontologist slip some under a microscope. We saw fragments of diatom shells in there. They were signs of life from millions of years ago and proof that they had found what they were looking for. It was one of the many moments of this whole trip that I'll remember for the rest of my life.